Hello, and welcome to the Scriptures Are Real podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about elements of the scriptures that have helped them become real to us, because we believe that helps us draw more power out of them, and that's what we really need. I'm your host, Kerry Mielstein, and this is a short cast. I haven't done one for a while. I uh, just recorded one uh, that will air in a couple of weeks there where I said the same thing, but as I did that, I thought, you know what, I really need to, to do a second short cast that would come out. So I'm recording this like a day before it's going to come out. Um, hopefully my editor can uh, do this in time, but I just felt like it was important uh, to, to talk a little bit about something here. So uh, first of all, announcements right now, you can still get the um, the discount on my books at Siegel Book. Uh, type in, go to SiegelBook.com and type in the code carry 25 K-E-R-R-Y-25, and you can um, be, get a 25% discount. Also, we have the uh, workshops coming up on the Book of Mormon and on the uh, Egyptian temples and Egyptian pyramids and uh, gospel ideas. So the Book of Mormon workshop is uh, December 7th, 8th, and 9th, the evening of the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, and the Egyptian one is 15 and 16. I've talked about those more in depth in other episodes. I think these are going to be really fun where we can get into depth on a lot of fun things. And, and uh, it's just going to be cool. So email us at the scriptures are real at gmail.com uh, to help with that. Uh, and also, I'll just say that it's uh, Giving Tuesday. Uh, I think I talked about Giving Tuesday in the other one when it's actually past Giving Tuesday. But still, uh, for Giving Tuesday, we'd love for you to consider emailing us there, and we can tell you how I can uh, help support the scriptures are real. Uh, we're just needing a little bit uh, more money. to. Uh, we've had some wonderful sponsors and people who have made wonderful gifts, but we just need a little bit more to be able to, to keep afloat. So uh, consider all of those things. In any case... I wanted to talk a little bit about covenants. That's a big surprise coming from me. Uh, but I wanted to talk about covenants. It's been on my mind quite a bit lately. And it really uh, hits me as we look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, you see several places where he talks about, uh, so for example, uh, we've got verse 15 in chapter 1. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversations, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. That that comes uh, from Leviticus. And this is really uh, where he starts to, to think about and talk about the covenant, which he becomes very explicit about. But you have to recognize covenant phraseology to know he's explicit about it in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, where he says, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he's drawing on language that's given at Mount Sinai as they're entering into the covenant, and they are they're coming and they, they can see the light of God there, right? And they're leaving behind Egypt and so on. And this idea of leaving behind the world. And uh, becoming more like God, that's what becoming holy means, really, um, is all about uh, covenants. And, and he's drawing on that. And then the short cast that I'll do when we do uh, first and second John and and so on, uh, that's uh, that's when I'll I'll talk about that. So that's next week. Um, and uh, some of you will listen to that before giving Tuesday and some after. But anyway, that's that's next week. So but since he's talking about the covenant here. It reminded me of some things that I felt that I needed to talk about in terms of the covenant. And I mentioned this briefly in the episode with Nick Frederick on first and second John's, but first and second John. Uh, but I want to be very uh, clear about this. Uh, I have taught in other places based on Mosiah chapter 18, that when we enter into the covenant of baptism, that we covenant to uh, obey God, um, to uh, stand as witnesses of God. Uh, and to uh, take the name of Christ upon us, and that we covenant to, to mourn with those that mourn and comfort those that stand in need of comfort and, and help other people. Uh, I've taught that uh, in a number of places. Um, and I've read other people teaching that, in, including some leaders of the church. But it's my understanding that uh, recently President Nelson and others were making it uh, clear to the church uh, correlation committee that the uh, the covenant were incorrect in saying that at baptism we enter into that covenant to mourn with those that mourn and help other people. Uh, we certainly should do that. Uh, it's it's the natural extension of loving God and loving others and um, and of uh, being covenant keepers with God, it will naturally happen. But our covenant is with God. Now, I, I heard that. I didn't hear that from them. I heard it from other people. And so that always makes me wonder, okay, am I getting this through filters and different people? Is, is that, uh, how should I take that? Is that accurate or not? Um, but I recently heard a talk that I'm going to talk some more about in just a minute by Elder Renland. Um, 
uh, it was Elder and Sister Rendland at a devotional at BYU Idaho. And uh, Elder Renlund said that very, very explicitly and, and in the same way I'd heard it there. So I suspect that he is also uh, taking this message from uh, that I, I've heard is coming from President Nelson uh, and and uh, getting it out there. And so I want to publicly say that I am sorry that I said those other things earlier. It was the best of my understanding at the time. Uh, but now that we've been taught by a prophet more uh, specifically, I want to fall in line with that and say very, very specifically that uh, we covenant with God and uh, we are in a covenant community with others. Elder President Nelson has certainly taught that, that we have a, a vertical and a horizontal element to the covenant, and that as we love God, we also love others, that that that, that introduces that ele- horizontal element, that we're in a covenant community, and that's that horizontal element. And certainly in marriage, we're, we're in that horizontal element, um, uh, but, but the uh, covenant is with God and to do those other things that are a baptism. So I want to make sure that I am very explicit about that and uh, that uh, we're going to teach it that way uh, because the, the Lord's mouthpiece has uh, taught us that. And thank goodness, uh, well, thank God that we live in a day with modern prophets where we can get uh, this kind of clarification and understand things more and more. And it's not surprising. And it is, in fact, a blessed thing that in a day and age where we're talking about covenants and learning about covenants from a prophet, that we'll get a little bit of further revelation and light to help us understand those covenants better. I am so grateful for that. Uh, I also wanted to highlight some of uh, what Elder Renlund talked about in this devotional, and I would urge you to go to the devotional. So if you just Google, and I will try to remember to put it in the show notes. I'm really terrible at doing that, but I'll try to remember. Um, But I would urge you to just Google um, Elder Renlund or Elder and Sister Renlund, uh, BYU-Idaho devotional, October 2023. And I think you'll find it there. There's kind of a funny way they make you listen to it. It's not an easy uh, platform and you have to log in and give them personal information. I don't know why to be able to, you can listen without that, but if you want to rewind or do anything, you have to log in. I'm not a big fan of that, but still it's worth it to be able to hear this talk. I don't know. I just don't know why BYU Idaho has it on that platform, but um, it's worth it to listen to this talk. It is a profound and amazing talk where some elements of the covenant are explained better than I've uh, heard them anywhere else. And Elder Rendland does it in a way that a heart surgeon would write. He he has some comparisons with organic chemistry uh, where he, he talks about uh, the, the chemical bonds and sharing electrons, and, and he's going to use that to help us understand the covenant. He talks about uh, statistical probability of heart attacks and, and then ties that in, to, uses that as a teaching method to talk about covenants. But I'm going to focus, and, and I want to thank my, my friend and colleague who you've heard before and we'll hear again in a couple of weeks uh, as we get into the Book of Revelation. Revelation, Dr. Phil Allred, who is the one who pointed this talk out to me and and helped me see the strong, strong connections that Elder Renlund made that are just so fantastic that uh, I just want to highlight for you and then get you to go listen to it. Um, But I'm grateful to him for uh, sharing this with me and sharing a a PowerPoint that helped me see it graphically really well. Uh, Very grateful for that. But let me just highlight some elements where Elder Renlund teaches us how the covenant of baptism is expanded upon and and strengthened. And this is where he gets into these, uh, you know, the bonds in, in uh, of atoms in chemistry, that if you have a triple bond, it's a stronger bond than a single bond and so on, where you have more electrons being shared and more, more ways that it's uh, bonded together. In any case, uh, we enter into the covenant of baptism, but then as we go through the endowment and enter into covenants there, and then as we're sealed, we it's just uh, it's the same covenant. And I've thought that for a very long time. You're just entering into it further. Uh, but he teach, shows us explicitly how that happens and also tells us that as we do so, that those bonds become stronger and the probability of us breaking those bonds goes down. And that's where his comparison with uh, a statistical probability of heart attacks comes in. But anyway, uh the, let me just go through these highlights for you. It's wonderful stuff. So uh, when we are baptized, we promise or we covenant to serve God, to keep his commandments, and to take upon us the name of Jesus Christ. Then we amplify each of those promises as we go through the endowment. So I'm just going to, to use, he only uses language that is in uh, the handbook of instructions and elsewhere about the covenants in the temple. And I'm only using language that is both there and that he specifically made. So I'm not talking about anything we shouldn't talk about. Uh, they are sacred and I hope I, I'm doing my best to talk about them appropriately. And I hope that you are hearing them appropriately and with the spirit with you so that we keep these sacred. Uh, but I'm going to just mirror and echo uh, an apostle in choosing what I talk about. So in the endowment, we covenant to uh, uh, to obey. 
the covenant of obedience, which of course very explicitly ties in with the covenant we made at baptism in keeping God's commandments. We also covenant to sacrifice, uh, to sacrifice uh, whatever we uh, were asked to sacrifice in the service of God. And he shows us how that uh, sacri- when we sacrifice or we're covenant to sacrifice to support the Lord and his work, that ties in with the baptismal covenant of serving God. When we sacrifice a broken heart and a contrite spirit, that's part of, of keeping God's commandments. Uh, we repent and, and come to him in that way. That's part of keeping his commandments. And uh, at that sacrifice and, and repentance is also part of how we take upon us the name of Jesus Christ. So in a way, the, the covenant to sacrifice uh, takes upon us all three or strengthens uh, and and uh, enhances the bonds with God that we make when we covenant at baptism to serve God, keep his commands, and take upon us the name of Jesus Christ. So you can see how this is all part of the new and everlasting or the Abrahamic covenant, just laying bond upon bond, strand upon strand uh, in in the closeness of our bonds with God. We next covenant to uh, obey the law of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which includes loving God and loving our neighbor. And so we get that in, in uh, that's another way of saying that we'll serve God. Um, it's It includes just promising that we'll make and keep covenants, and that's part of keeping our commandments. And we uh, we covenant that we'll live the doctrine of Christ, which includes taking upon us the name of Christ. And so uh, you can see that, again, all three of the baptismal covenants are intertwined with the law of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We also covenant to uh, obey the law of chastity. And uh, he highlights that this is part of obeying the commandments, that we will keep that law of chastity. And so it, it works with um, with that element of the baptismal covenant. And we covenant to consecrate everything we are, have, and and so on to God. Uh, and clearly, that's an element of serving God, that covenant, the baptismal covenant of serving God, when we dedicate everything we have to the Lord's church. But this also, uh, as we have a consecrated heart and, we, and it changes who we are, that's part of taking upon us the name of Jesus Christ. So he shows us how uh, all we just keep strengthening these bonds again and again. We've got uh, several ways that we uh, uh, do this with keeping God's commandments, but also with serving God and taking upon us the name of Jesus Christ. Then if we go to the sealing covenant, uh, in there we covenant that we will serve each other, uh, meaning husband and wife will serve each other and our children, and in doing so we'll serve God by, by bringing them to God. So he teaches us that this is part of serving God. And that we'll keep all the commandments related to marriage in the new and everlasting covenant. Of course, that's part of obedience. And that we, as we become like the Savior by doing these other things, it leads us to exaltation uh, in the highest state of happiness and, and uh, dominions and resurrection and so on. And that's all part of how we take upon us the name of Christ. So um, I, th- I think that's uh, just a, a wonderful thing that Elder Renland has taught us. Uh, that I would invite you to listen to his entire devotional and Sister Renlund's devotional. They're really wonderful, powerful things. Uh, to think about these things, I've, I've just uh, haven't quite finished listening to the talk. I've listened to about 90% of it at this point. Uh, and he has a lot of invitations. Oh, no, I, I did finish. And he has a lot of invitations at the end, and it's it's wonderful. And I can hardly wait to go uh, to the the temple and go through that endowment session again and then do some ceilings uh, as and try and look for these connections myself and understand them even better myself. And so I thought uh, it was worth bringing that to my audience, both the quick summary and the invitation to listen to the whole thing, uh, to think about your covenants uh, or the covenant and how these different uh, covenants are really just part of the covenant with God. And I believe it will increase our bonds with God and give us greater access to the atoning power of Christ and the peace and Uh, and rest that can come from that uh, as we let God prevail in our lives all the more. And I am looking forward to that. I hope that if you find this helpful, you'll share it with other people and that you'll consider uh, the different ways we can all edify each other. Thank you.